Hello and welcome back. OK, today I want to solve an issue that's been a problem for me for a while, and that's the power on reset. So if I cut the power and then put it back on, all the different latch chips and the counter chips kind of initialize in an unknown state. Now, sometimes they seem quite consistent and sometimes they seem very random, but the specifications for them say you indetermined. So sometimes different combinations of these are on. They get different results in these uh, chips in the pipeline. And that means that every time that I actually want to start up and test code, I kind of perform this sequence of operations. These five lines are the reset or the clear lines, which I'm using for reset, into the counter chips. So if I hold that high, all of the counter chips reset to zero, including the program counter. So then if I clock the pipeline a few times, I load the zero that I put in the start of memory into the whole of the pipeline and you know, that's the processor fully reset. The general purpose registers don't reset but we can handle that in software. So now my code starts executing fine. Now as it is if I just switch it on and start executing it's, uh, it's going to be going from a random location in memory and if I just reset the program counter and I still have garbage in here, there could be some unknown operation like uh, something encoding a jump or something like that, which would cause execution to be very erratic. So I want to get that all reset down. I do have this little uh, power monitoring chip that I put in the first video, which can generate a reset signal. So that's this blue LED here. Now this is an active low output, but I'm currently feeding it through an inverter. So if I interrupt the power, you see a little flash. This is just the power to this board. I see some erratic response elsewhere because I'm messing with the clock signal when I do that. That's probably a, a good simple first place to, to actually get a reset control in. So what I'm going to do for a reset button initially is I'm just going to wire the normally closed portion of this switch into the power for this chip because then it should uh, momentarily interrupt that and it will generate the, the reset pulse. Okay, it seems to be working. Now the reset pulse is probably long enough but I'm going to see if I can extend it a little bit. That's controlled by this capacitor here. That's a bit more visible. OK, now I've already kind of tied all of these reset lines together. I think I'm going to move this further down. Now the reset pulse as it exists coming off the power on reset chip is active low and the clear here is active high. And I'm also going to do the same as with the clock in that for these big broadcast signals, I want to limit the number of TTL loads that each circuit takes. And the reset here is if I'm wiring all of these clear lines together, is going to be driving five times four. So that's uh, 20 of the counter chips. So I'm going to pass the reset signal through an inverter. I've got a spare one here. Now I have to work out to get this wire all the way over there. I'll uh, bridge the wires like this. OK. So I've not seen any LEDs come on here in a power cycle now. That seems to be working. So our reset button is indeed resetting all the counter registers. Now we need to worry about this. Now it does occur to me that if we've got the processor running and we reset, it's probably actually behaving correctly because the clock will tick enough times to clear all of this out while the reset line is held low. But if we reset with the clock in single step mode, that's not going to happen. So let's see what we can do about that. What I think I'm going to try and do is construct a miniature clock circuit that is going to clock the pipeline while the reset is low. Now, there's lots of different ways we could do that. All I really need to see is this line pulsed 
kind of three or four times while the reset is active and then everything should be cleared down. But I haven't got a particular attachment to one or other way of doing it. So let's build a, a little mini clock. So it's a 555 timer, the same as we used up here. Okay, that's working quite nicely. Probably needs to be faster than that. Let's keep it visible. I'll adjust the, uh, the values on here and hardwire it once we're working. But it's nice to be able to see that we're actually getting a response from it. So what we want is to use this clock. Let's keep it. Right, why is that not doing anything? So when I connected the clock line for the pipeline into a new little clock instead of the main system clock, I expected this to all clean itself up. Ah, I see. What we've got is there's a clock line that goes into these chips that moves the value from the address register into the output latches, which are done so that we can assert the previous value while we're incrementing or decrementing. What's happening here is this is clocking the pipeline, but the address bus has a value on it, which is unknown at this point but this is what is at that address and this is being clocked constantly into the pipeline so we need to work out a way around that if I were to take the clock for the board over here from this address it would work correctly that might be enough actually let's give that a try okay so now what I need to do is I need to merge the two clock signals together. Now if you remember on this clock, I actually passed the reset signal into the through an inverter into the reset input on the 555. So what I'm interested in doing is the same over here. So I take the reset line. Okay, that's not what I want. I want the inverted reset line. Right, that's good. So we now get a burst of clock cycles out of this 555, but then we suppress it once the reset state has ended. And everything is resetting properly because I'm now taking the clock that goes into the counter registers from the same place. Of course, that clock no longer advanced the processor, and that's what we need to deal with next. Okay, so what I've got here is a 74LS32, which is a four two-input OR gates. So what I'm thinking is if I OR the two clock lines together, because this one stops once the reset condition ends, I should get what I want. Here's the main clock from the clock circuit. Put that into one input. Hey, it works. I should probably try not to sound too surprised. Reset. And the code starts executing fine. Let 
Okay, this capacitor here that sets the time duration of the reset probably doesn't need to be anything like as long as it is. But that's definitely working. Yeah, so this can, I'll turn that up as high as it goes. So I believe this one I put in was 0.15 microfarad. So this is a 47 nanofarad, so it's about a third of the capacitance. Okay, it didn't quite get it all out. Go in between. So I could probably have the same effect by reducing the capacitor here and making this reset clock run faster. I'll take the win. It's working. Can now reset my circuit with the push of a button. Okay, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. That's going to be a massive time saver, apart from the fact that I think I'm going to be second guessing the reset circuit whenever I uh, run into any problems. But in terms of just being able to iterate on the code a little bit and uh, an experiment, that's, uh, that's very useful. It can be a smaller wire. Excellent. Okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.